Hey, it's Nathan Williams with Crazy Marketing. In this video, we're gonna talk about targeting on Facebook ads, and we're gonna go through a couple different scenarios. The first scenario is gonna be for the small businesses that have like a physical location, and you're gonna be targeting like a radius around your business. The next scenario is gonna be if you're targeting like a nation, a country, or a large region. And then the third situation is gonna be if you're targeting custom audiences or lookalike audiences. And I'm gonna be dropping a lot of tips and tricks and tactics along the way. So uh, let's get into it. We have a lot to discuss. So to get to the targeting options, we have to get down to the ad set level. And in order to get to the ad set level, we have to have a campaign first. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a campaign real quick. Now I am in the quick creation mode. However, to keep things consistent, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the guided creation mode. So that way you can follow along. Same screen, looks like my screen. So this is the guided creation now. And then we need to go ahead and select an objective. I'm just gonna go with traffic for this particular example. I have another video that talks about your campaign objectives and I'll link to that below. So you can learn about that there. Again, this one's more about targeting. So we just did the bare, bare basics here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. And I wanna get down here to audiences. So this is where I'm focused on is the audience targeting. So we have a couple different options here. So we have custom audiences. And I'm gonna come back to that as our third scenario. But then we get down into like locations and demographics as well as interest and behavior type information. And this is where you can do a lot of your own t like custom targeting based off of like your ideal customer. So this is where, this is where we wanna go ahead and pay attention. And in this first scenario, we're pretending we're a small business that has like a physical location and we wanna target like a location near our business, right? So just for the sake of example, I wanna grab this address to Walmart and we can go ahead and plug that in here and click okay. So you can do the same thing with your business address and you can add multiple addresses if you want to. So if you have multiple locations and you wanna run ads to, you can go ahead and do that. So there we go. I can go ahead and adjust the radius anywhere from one mile up to 50 miles. So you can get a pretty, you know, small radius. Um, of course, depending on your competition and how far people are willing to travel, that would change what radius you choose. Um, a, one, one rule of thumb is the larger the audience on Facebook is the more people that Facebook can advertise to and the more data it can collect and the better it can optimize your advertising efforts. So err on the side of being larger and not like targeted enough than being too targeted. So be bigger is better than too small, okay, when it comes to Facebook advertising. So if you think five miles is pretty good, go to six, seven, or eight. That's just kind of rule of thumb. Another thing we wanna go ahead and look at right here is this drop down menu. So right now it says people living in or recently in this location. So what we probably wanna do is go ahead and change it to people living in this location. So that way you're targeting people that actually live here instead of people that might have like, you know, visited like family or something like that and now they're gone, but you're still advertising to them. So recommend changing this to living in this location so that way you're targeting people that are still around. And then moving on down here, we get into some of the demographic information like age and gender and languages. So right here, again, you wanna go, it's better to go broader than too narrow. So unless you know that there's an age range that is not good for your business, I recommend leaving it as wide open as possible. But let's just say that you know that no one over 40 goes to your business. Uh, 18 to 40 is your audience, like, even 40s pushing it. Well then, that's fine. You can set it what it is, that is okay. Gender, also, if it's very obvious that only women come to your location or only men come to your location, then you know select what's relevant there. Again, if you can leave it wide open, leave it wide open. Languages, I recommend leaving this wide open as well unless there's some reason that you need to hone in on a language, but again, you don't want too small of an audience when you're targeting you know a small radius anyway. And then coming down into detail targeting. When it comes to this small radius targeting, I don't recommend doing any detail targeting. You're gonna make your audience way too small if you start playing with different interests and behaviors on Facebook. And Facebook's not gonna be able to like figure out who actually responds to your ads. Instead, it's better to like saturate your eight mile radius around your business than it is to like target people that like dogs or whatever it might be. You know, just because they might not like dogs on Facebook doesn't mean that they don't have a dog or something like that. So you don't wanna cut people out based off of what Facebook thinks are their interests. Instead, you want to show your ads to as many people as possible and let the algorithm figure out who is actually interested in your business. 
So that's pretty much it when it comes to targeting a physical location. It's pretty simple targeting. You're basically targeting a radius with some basic demographic information and most everything else you wanna leave wide open. All right, so this next scenario is for people that are targeting like a nation or something like that, an entire country. So let's come back out of here and we wanna go ahead and target the United States. So we'll pop that in there. So the entire country of the United States will go ahead and plug in right now. And I'll back out a little more. Okay, there we go. And of course the same option is available here. So people living in this location or recently in this location or traveling in this location or live in or recently in this location. So same same concept here. Probably wanna select people living in this location unless, unless you have a reason to select one of these other options and that's fine too. I also wanna point out that you can exclude places. For example, like if you're selling certain products or services, like they might not be like allowed in different states. For example, California has a lot of weird laws and maybe your product or service isn't, you can't sell it in California. So you could go ahead and exclude like California from your advertising efforts. So exclude California. Now, you know, we're not advertising to California anymore. And also real quick, I want to point out that on the right hand side here, we see like our estimated audience size of who we could go ahead and reach. So you see right now we're at 110 million people based off of our, our settings here. And it gives us like our daily reach and landing page view estimates. And these are just broad estimates. It really depends on the quality of your advertisements that impact your reach and your landing page views. But when it comes to really large targeting, uh, your potential reach, a good number to shoot for is around 2 million people. That's a good large enough audience uh, for Facebook to go ahead and get enough data on who is converting and who is clicking and who is engaging with your business. So about 2 million is a good a good rule of thumb when it comes to a national size audience. Now, I want to caveat that real quick because sometimes like your audience size is your audience size. Like if you're selling nuclear reactors or something crazy like that and you know there's only 10 people in the world that buy nuclear reactors, well, then you know you you only have an audience size of 10 or whatever it might be. Nuclear reactors might be a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the idea. Some products or some services, you know, they're they're niche. You might only have 100,000 people or 250,000 people available to you in the entire United States and if that's the case then that's what your audience size is. That's okay. But if, you're, if your product or service can reach a broader market, well, 2 million is a good, a good goal to shoot for. So just wanted to put that out there real quick. So anyway, moving on down here, we have the same age and gender demographic information we can go ahead and manipulate here. And obviously, since we're working with a much larger audience, we could go ahead and be a little bit more specific into what we want to go for. So if you want to narrow it a little bit to make sure that you're targeting the right people, you could go ahead and do that. Same with gender, of course. You can go ahead and select what's relevant for you. And same with language if you want to as well. So you can go ahead and select that option. And then we get down into the detail targeting. So this comes down to our demographics, interests, and behaviors. And we can actually go ahead and start playing with this now because as you see with our current demographic information, we're at 82 million people. And so that's that's too big of an audience. So we need to go ahead and select some interests and behaviors and kind of narrow in on our audience. And so now basically what you're gonna wanna try and do is get your audience down to about that two million person range, as long as that's relevant, of course. Again, if it's smaller, it's smaller, that's fine. But two million is a good number. And you could go ahead and search for demographic information or interests or behaviors. Alternatively, you could go ahead and browse. So you click browse here and you see it breaks it down nicely for you. You could go in here and be like, oh, education and education level. And you'd be like, okay, I want people that are college graduates. So that sounds good. And then you could come down here and let's say parents and all parents. And let's say that we do want all parents. So we'll click this option here and so on. So you could go in here and browse around, or again, you could go ahead and search for different options. Now, one thing I want to point out is each of these boxes is an or, or, an or statement box. So what I mean by that is that this is college grads or parents, or it could be both. It could be college grads that are also parents. And maybe we were like, hmm, well, I actually wanted college grads that are parents. And let's just take a note or a look at our audience. So we have 34 million people that are college grads or parents or both. And if we wanted to do college grads that are also parents, we would have to go ahead and select this narrow audience option here. So let's go ahead and delete out parents here and do narrow audience. And now you see that there's an and option here. So and must also match parent. So now I'll go ahead and search for parent. 
and we see we have parents all under demographics right now. So I'll go ahead and select that option. So now we have college grad and also they're a parent. And we noticed that it dropped from I think 38 million down to 7.8 million. So pay attention to what you're putting in these different boxes. Again, each box is an or statement. So it could be any of the things you put in each box. But if you want to narrow it, you have to do this narrow further option and you can hone in on exactly who you wanna go ahead and target. Also, you could go ahead and exclude people. So let's say you wanna exclude people interested in dogs for whatever reason. So you, you don't like dog people. So we'll type in dog right here and we see we have dogs as interests. And you know, that, that's very broad. So let's come on down here a little bit and see if there's like a behavior, like they, they have a dog or something like that. So a lot of interests shown here. But for the sake of example, let's say we don't want people that like Snoop Dogg. Like we just don't, we don't want people that like his music. They're not, they're not our audience. So now we're targeting college grads that are also parents uh, who do not like Snoop Dogg. And we have 7.3 million people. So there's what, 500,000 college grads that are parents that do like Snoop Dogg apparently. So interesting note. And so as you can see, by selecting different demographics, interests, and behaviors, you can narrow in on your audience. Now, it can be kind of hard to you know, figure out how to zone in on who you want to go ahead and target. So one strategy that I recommend is the audience stacking strategy. And for this strategy, you're going to want to target specific interests. So for example, like names like Tim Ferriss or Mad Men or MailChimp or Inc. Magazine, et cetera, and not broad interests like entrepreneurship or dogs is very broad. There's like 560 million people that like dogs or you know, probably a billion people that are interested in entrepreneurship. So you don't wanna target broad interests. You wanna target specific interests that are by name and you wanna stack different categories of specific interests together. So for example, like movies and TV shows, and then they must also be interested in certain magazines and they must be also interested in certain people or books and authors or websites or apps or companies or travel locations or clothing or musicians or restaurants or some category. So what I mean by that is, let's come back over here and let's say that I am targeting digital marketing type people. And just for a sake of example, let's type in Tim Ferriss. So we'll go Timothy Ferriss. And that's probably the wrong one. We see that it's only 33,000 people. So let's look at Tim Ferriss down here. So 718 thousand people and that's kind of small as well I thought he had a larger audience but anyway Tim Ferriss and then we can hit suggestions here and now we see some more options pop up so we can go with like Tony Robbins uh, where Robert Kiyosaki sure whatever um, Gary Vaynerchuk so again we're going after people is the point right so that that's like our category here and then we want to go ahead and narrow the audience even more because we're at 10 10 million people, which is still too broad. So now maybe we get into tools that digital marketers like. So maybe like MailChimp. So MailChimp, and then I can hit suggestions now and we have some other tools. So like Hootsuite, uh, HubSpot, Constant Contact, Infusionsoft, Buffer, Marketo, Moz, WordPress, and so on. So you keep adding some different tools that these entrepreneurs use. And then you finally get to you know an audience size that makes sense. And maybe you have to add additional tools or additional people in order to scale up your audience size to about that two million number. Again, that's that's the ideal goal. So this audience stacking strategy is a good way to like systematically come up with your audiences instead of just like picking random things and hoping you get to two million. Instead, stack stack what what's relevant together. All right, moving on down here, we get into detailed targeting expansion and it says reach people beyond your detailed targeting selections when it's likely to improve performance. Now this sounds very good. You wanna improve performance, right? But there's been dozens of case studies on this little checkbox here and every one of them comes back as not producing better results. So for the time being, recommendation is don't check this box because it's like a money pit. And if that changes, I'll try and include a note in the description below so you can go ahead and learn more about that. And then we get into connections, so people that like your Facebook page or don't like your page or whatever. So if that's relevant, you can go ahead and mess with that. All right, so that is basically targeting at the broad country national level. And as you can see, there's a lot more you can go ahead and play with. In particular, you're getting into your different um, behaviors and interests and demographic information to, to shrink your audience because you don't want it too big. 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out all this stuff we set, so one second. All right, so in this third scenario, we're gonna be using custom audiences, and I have another video on the pixel and how to actually create these custom audiences, so I'll include a link to that below if you don't know how to do it already. So basically, a custom audience is a group of people that have already engaged with your business, so they've already visited your website, or they watched a video on Facebook, or they engage with your Facebook page, or they've done something with your business. So you have their their contact information basically, or the fact that they, they, they've been pixeled is what it's called. So they're on your retargeting or your custom audience list. And then basically you can go ahead and target those people that are on your custom list. So for example, I have a list of people that have visited my website in the last 60 days. So I can click, click that. And now I'm targeting you know, everyone that's visited my website in the last 60 days. So that can be tremendously powerful. And this is how you do retargeting. And again, I have another video on retargeting as well. So if you're interested in more advanced retargeting strategies, I recommend that video, but this is you know a quick overview. So we have where you can go ahead and target your custom audiences. Also, one thing that you probably wanna learn and understand is how to exclude these custom audiences. So you might wanna exclude people that have already performed certain actions. Like for example, if you're advertising a lead magnet or something like that, you might wanna exclude everybody that's already become a lead or a buyer in the last 30 days or whatever it might be. So that way you're not advertising to these people again. So exclusions are a big deal when it comes to custom audiences because you don't wanna to advertise to people that have already done what you're advertising for. So you wanna exclude you know, leads or exclude buyers or exclude people that attended your webinar or whatever it might be, right? So hopefully you can see the power there. Now, another thing you can do with your custom audiences is create lookalike audiences. And these are audiences of people that look like the custom audience you've created. So if you have an audience of like leads and buyers and you create a lookalike audience of those leads and buyers, you can target them. So for example, I have a lookalike audience of leads and buyers that have converted into leads or buyers in the last 30 days. So now I'm targeting about 2.1 million people that look like people that become leads and buyers of my business in the last 30 days. So as you can probably tell, this is a very powerful audience to go ahead and target. And when you're targeting these lookalike audiences, you wanna leave everything else like wide open. Facebook has already gone out there and figured out who looks most like the people on your custom audience list. So you don't wanna do any extra narrowing right here. You wanna leave all this stuff wide open when you're working with lookalike audiences because again, Facebook already, they already did this information for you. They already figured out the age range, the genders, the languages, the interests, the demographics, the behaviors. They did all that stuff when they created the lookalike audience. So you don't wanna mess with it. You don't wanna tinker with it. Leave it wide open when doing lookalike audiences. And again, I have a video down below on these custom audiences and lookalike audiences and retargeting. So if you want more on that, definitely check out those videos. And that's pretty much it for this video. We did cover three different scenarios. We covered a small business with like a physical location and a radius targeting. We covered a, a national business where we targeted the entire country and we did some uh, interest and behavior targeting and then we covered using custom and lookalike audiences and you know the benefits to those and so hopefully you found this video helpful if you did i appreciate any sorts of likes comments subscribes anything like that or if you have any sorts of questions at all please ask them down below i want to help you out so anyway i hope you have a great rest of the day and thank you for your time